Resolve 17 adds a new feature to the Color tab that's worth taking a look at, and that's a set of Color Space Aware tools, or rather updates to pre-existing tools to make them Color Space Aware. What does that mean? It means that those tools work more consistently across multiple color spaces. In other words, the results are more predictable, and the feel as you grade is more consistent. Not all the tools have been made Color Space Aware, but a few important ones have. These include the Qualifier, and the Curves tool. Let's see how those work. Going back to the RCM Wide Gamut project, let's take a look at the project settings. Preset set to Wide Gamut, the output color space set to Rec. 709. Let's try using the qualifier and then changing the color space to see how the results differ. Perhaps we want to separate out these bright lampshades. To make the result a bit cleaner, I'm going to switch the color space here for the qualifier from HSL to Luminance just concerned about the brightness. Now I'll sample one of these lampshades. I can see the result of the key because my highlight button is on. Now just to make sure that I'm keeping the brightest part of the scene in the center of these lampshades, I'll drag the right side of my luminance handle here all the way up to the maximum. Now let's try a different color space. First let's try another log space, perhaps a camera space. To access the different menus, I'll switch this preset to custom. Then I'll change the timeline color space to a camera log space. Let's try red wide gamut. Before I save, I'll move this dialog down so we can see the lampshades here. And I'll click save. Some very minor differences along the edges, but overall it's very consistent. Now the Median gray in the background that represents transparency does change a bit, but that doesn't affect the key. Let's try another color space. Maybe one that's not quite as large in terms of the gamut. Let's try an HDR space. Rec 2100 ST2084. Again, I'll move this down. Click Save. Again, the background gray changes a bit, but the key itself is very, very consistent. Now, it's not perfect, but in general, we'll find that the qualifier works more consistently with a similar feel across multiple color spaces. Now, of course, if you're already grading, you don't want to change the timeline color space halfway through the project. So this is really just for a demonstration. Let's move on to the Curves tool. In fact, let's try the Curves tool in the HDR space. I'll leave the timeline color space set to Rec. 2100, and I'll also change the output color space to Rec. 2100. Click Save. I'll go ahead and reset the qualifier. I'll skip over to the Curves tool. Now we're looking at an HDR output. But remember, the view here is only an approximation. In order to see the true result, you need an HDR monitor hooked to your system. Now with previous versions of Resolve, in order to make this look a bit closer, you'd have to go to a node and activate the HDR mode option. The color Space Aware tools prevent the need to do that. Again, despite that improvement, you'll have to look at your HDR monitor, but at least you don't have to activate that mode. Now, in terms of the Curves tool itself, you should find that it's a bit easier to use with HDR material and HDR space. The feel of the gradient should be a bit more conventional, like non-HDR footage. It's always a bit of a challenge, though, so give it a try yourself and see how you like it. Now, aside from the Curves tool being a bit easier to use with HDR, there's also a new palette right here, HDR Grade. It has a different set of wheels. And these are broken into exposure zones, dark, shadow, light, and also a global control. Each one of those wheels has an exposure and a saturation. And all the other options are clustered down here at the bottom. These wheels also have side controls in the forms of these arcs. With the global wheel, these arcs control the tints or the color balance. With the dark, shadow, and light wheels, those arc controls determine the size of those exposure zones. For example, if I click drag this left handle on the shadow, you can set how large that shadow zone is, and you'll see the result right up there in the view. Now I'm seeing that keyed result because the highlight button is on. I'll reset the shadow wheel. Now let's try the dark wheel and the light wheel. Now, if you don't want to use the highlight button, you can turn it off, and then you can preview a zone by clicking on the circular button above the wheel. For example, here's the shadow zone. So that is the area that's being affected when you use a shadow wheel. 
Here's the dark zone and the light zone. The HDR palette is designed specifically for HDR work. See how you like to feel as you grade the HDR footage. Now this image is looking a bit dark, so I'll go ahead and adjust the exposure here and the saturation using the master wheel. And I can use that in combination with my curves tool. Again, take a look at your HDR monitor and make sure that's looking good. Speaking of HDR, we'll discuss SDR and HDR in more detail and how that works with tone mapping when you have to go from one of those spaces to another. And we'll start that discussion in the next video.